Hello, and welcome to the MicroDesk sponsored webinar. Today we'll be giving a quick how-to on the creation of dynamic blocks. My name is Michael Kirk, and I'm a solution specialist here at MicroDesk in the architecture field. We're going to jump right directly into AutoCAD and show how we can create some dynamic blocks and some of their uses. When we're inside of our AutoCAD field, we'll be able to go to our Insert tab and use the Block Editor tool. Now, this Block Editor tool is fully functional in the creation of our dynamic blocks, but it's also used if I wanted to take a block that already existed in my drawing and make revisions to it without having to explode it and redefine it. So that's another use for our Block Editor. But today, we're going to be using it to create our own dynamic blocks. When you look at a dynamic block inside of the block editor field or inside of your tool palette, you're going to notice a lightning bolt symbol here. That's to let you know that it is a dynamic block. So we're going to create a dynamic block called rectangle. Select OK. And that's going to get us into our dynamic block interface. You see we have our block editor tab here. And inside of our block editor interface, we have a block authoring palette, which we're going to use to create both parameters and actions within our dynamic block creation. So we're going to start going back to my home tab, because we do have full use of all of our other tabs, even though our contextual block editor tab shows up. We're going to create a simple rectangle. I'm going to start my rectangle at 0, 0. I'm going to give my rectangle dimensions. And I'm going to make it one foot by one foot. You can see that's my rectangle as I zoom in a little bit. Now, in order to give this rectangle some behaviors and some dynamic actions to go along with it, I have to use my Parameters tab and my Axis tab. We're going to start with the Parameters tab and give it an action that's going to allow my rectangle to grow. We're going to treat this as if this is a vanity. So I'm going to give it a linear parameter. This is going to behave just like a dimension. Select my dimension points, left click, and then that's my linear parameter that gets created. As you can see my limited parameter, I have two grips that show up, and also an exclamation point symbol. That's there and it's going to stay there until we assign, we correctly assign an action to this parameter. So now my parameter is there. If I left click on that parameter and go into the properties, here are some of the things that I can adjust with it. I can adjust the number of grips depending on how, what side, and what direction I want my object to shrink or grow in. In this case, we only want it to grow in one direction, so I'm going to give it one grip. I'm going to give my parameter a name, and I'm just going to simply call it length. And also, once I give it that parameter, I go to the value set, and I'm deciding, one, how is it going to grow, and two, are there minimum and maximum dimensions that I want to make sure I keep. Under my distance type, I can choose increment if I want it to grow sequentially at a certain distance, or list. If, again, if it's growing sequentially, but items aren't going to completely be incremental and sequentially. So I can actually just put random dimensions in here and make that be part of the list, and that's the only dimension that it'll grow to. But we're going to go increment. I get this increment. I'm going to say it's going to be 6 inches. Our minimum is going to be 12 inches, and our maximum is going to be 48 inches. So we're basically saying this vanity can be from 1 foot to 4 feet. Once I give it those increments, which you'll see show up, especially after I escape out of this, is hash marks that are going to signify those increments that we just specified. Now that I have the parameter created, I can go to my Axis tab and create an action that's associated with that parameter. And we're going to make it a stretch action. Choose the stretch action. It wants me to select the parameter. I select my length parameter. And now that red circle with the X through it is telling me what side is going to be the side that grows. So I'm going to show the side with the grip. I left click. Now I have to give it a stretch 
crossing window to tell it what objects are going to be growing. And so I do that stretch action window around, again, the right-hand side, because that's the side with the grip. If, it was, if I wanted to grow in both directions, I would end up having to create two stretch actions and then draw a crossing window around either side. But we don't have to do that. Now I select the objects that are going to be associated with, the, with what moves, and I select the rectangle. Because it is a rectangle, I only have to select the one line. If it was individual lines, I would have to select the three lines associated with what's going to move. If I hit Enter, now the exclamation point is gone, and the stretch action is now created. I'm going to test this. I can either test it by closing out of the block editor and insert it into my drawing, or if I go over to the right-hand side of the block editor tab, I have a test block tool, and I'm going to use that. In my test block area, I select my rectangle, and you can see my rectangle grows at those increments. You see the hash marks show up. See my dynamic block? My dynamic input is telling me the size that that rectangle is. So that's done correctly. So I can close the test block window, and I'm back into my interface. If I want to add another object in here, I want to add, in this case, I want to add a circle that's going to be symbolic of the actual lavatory, I'm going to use my circle tool. My circle tool, I'm going to place it in the middle of this rectangle, and I want it to stay in the middle of that rectangle. So I'm going to do mid between two points, and create my circle. Now, in order for me to have it stay in the center of that rectangle, regardless of how that rectangle grows, I then have to create another dynamic action, which is going to entail creating another set of dynamic parameters involving this circle. So I'm going to go to my parameters, select another linear parameter. That's going to go from the center of the circle to the midpoint of the rectangle on the side that it grows. And this is my other distance parameter. And again, same thing applies. But in this case, I'm going to go to my parameter I created, I'm going to give it another name, and I'm just going to keep it length two, just to keep it simple. But as I scroll down to the bottom, I don't need any grips, because what we're actually going to do is, what we're trying to do is make this so that what happens to the circle is completely dependent on what happens to the rectangle. So I don't need any grips. And because I want to control what happens to the circle by what happens to the rectangle, I want to turn on chain actions. Now, now that that's done, I can create a parameter for the circle. And I'm going to create an action that's going to be a move action. Select this parameter. Select the center of the circle, because that's where the control is going to come from and then select the object, and I'm selecting that circle as the object, and I hit Enter. Now, if I select that Move action, you'll see it's controlling the parameter, which is controlling the circle. But now, I want to tie the two together. I want to tie the two together in two steps. One, select my Move action, and in order for it to move, it has a distance multiplier. By default, I move the object one unit the other object moves in unit. But because I want this circle to be centered, I want that distance multiplier to be 0.5. Now, I have to go back into the stretch action, the original stretch action, right click and add objects to that selection set by modifying it. And I draw my crossing window again. And now I select the objects that I want to be part of that crossing window. And I select that parameter. And I'm going to do this again just to make sure. Modify that selection set. Make sure I get that parameter in there. Select that parameter, and now if I hit Enter, 
I get to test this to see if it works again. So now I go back to the block editor tab, go to test block, and now when I select the rectangle, you see now the circle stays centered within that vanity. So that's how I can tie those two actions together with the chain actions and incorporating the second parameter I created into the first action that was created. This was done correctly. So now that this is done correctly, I can close my test block window. I can close out of the block editor, save my changes. And if I insert the rectangle into my drawing, you see I get my dynamic block symbology. Place my, again, my vanity with the lavatory in there. And when I stretch it, the vanity stays centered within the rectangle. So that's a pretty fundamental dynamic block that we've created. Again, creating a rectangle and created a vanity within that rectangle uh, so that we can then show our sink, our laboratory, centered within our countertop. Thank you for your time. If you have any other questions regarding our training facilities, uh, consulting services, feel free to contact uh, contact us at 800-336-3375 or email us at info at microdesk.com. Again, I thank you for your time.